welcome to another DCS tutorial and today we're going to be looking at FARPs. I'm going to be showing the Harrier but most of this content applies equally to helicopters as well. And F-15 pilots reckon they can go straight to vertical so they might also find it useful. The most important item when creating a FARP obviously is the FARP itself and there are a few basic types. There's the original four helipad FARP and a single FARP which we see here and there's now also an invisible FARP which obviously we can't see. Now the FARPs have several functions. First of all the ramp itself of course and additionally it provides the radio frequency and call sign for air traffic control and finally it also provides the resources for fuel, ammunition and supplies but we'll take a look at that a little bit later in the editor In addition to the FARP itself there are a few additional units needed to make it fully functioning now all of the following units provide the ability to rearm and repair aircraft as a minimum but some have additional functions. For comms to function you need either the command post or one of these comms vehicles. For ground power there is no fixed structure available. You have to have one of these vehicles available. If you want to refuel an aircraft, you will also need either the FARP fuel depot or one of these fuel trucks. The FARP tent, ammo storage and all of these vehicles only provide the ability to rearm and repair, but serve no other purpose. Finally, your aircraft must be within 100 metres of the centre of the FARP and all of the FARP resources must be within 150 metres of the centre of the FARP. One final thing you'll probably want is the portable TACAN station so you can find the base. There are two entries in the editor. One is just a static object and isn't functional. For a functional TACAN you'll need to go to ground vehicles, then fortification and from there find the TACAN beacon. And you can figure it like any TACAN using an advanced waypoint to set the channel just like you would do for a ship. Location is obviously an important consideration as well. For helicopters, any area of fairly even land is suitable. The same is true for the Harrier, if you want vertical takeoffs only. But if you want to use short takeoffs, then you're a little bit more limited. Now the Harrier can take off from grass, but it takes a little bit extra power to start taxiing around. But the real concern is uneven ground, which can damage the undercarriage. So it's probably a good idea to find an area of straight road to use or a mod which we'll look at later. Additionally you might find a perfect location but it's surrounded by trees or buildings but don't worry you can create zones and a mission trigger like I've done with my FARP and that will clear a given area as we can see on screen. Once you understand the basics, you can then tailor a FARP to your mission requirements. We'll look at radio comms first, as that's pretty straightforward. Normally, when you contact ATC, you get a list of air bases and ships nearby, and we have the same capability with a FARP. Now, there are just two settings. The first is the call sign, and the second is the frequency. All you really need to be careful of is to not to duplicate a pre-existing frequency and if you happen to have more than one FARP 
not to duplicate the call sign. So here we have London and the frequency is 127.5 megahertz. The next part is resource management and that's a little bit more interesting but it's only really useful for multi-sort emissions or campaigns or where the mission editor wants to limit what's available to units in terms of weapons and supplies. And it can also be used to make facilities a target which might impact the flow of a campaign. If you click on the full info, you can see what resources are available at this location. By default, the FARP will have infinite fuel, equipment and replacement aircraft. However, here you can see on the aircraft tab that I've removed the default and set it so there are only two Harriers and two Apaches available as replacements. The liquids tab is showing that we just have 20 tonnes of jet fuel here. And finally, the equipment tab has all the weapons available for the Harrier. And I've allowed plenty of dumb bombs, but I've limited the amount of smart weapons, so they need to be used sparingly. The copy function lets you copy what's here to any other airbase on the map. So you don't need to fill this info for every single airfield, which would take hours otherwise. The minimum stock is the amount of stock before a resupply is requested. And up at the top, these controls define how frequently supplies will arrive at this base. Here, it will travel at 12 knots from the supply depot and supplies will arrive every five minutes and 10 tons of supplies will arrive. And these will arrive from one of these five suppliers, which I've set up over here. As you can see, those five suppliers are actually warehouses within the base that are created. So here I'm simulating bringing weapons from the base storage facilities to the aircraft hangar, but it also gives enemies visible targets to attack. I've also dedicated those facilities to a certain role. So two are for jet fuel only, one is for diesel, one is for aircraft and equipment, and one is just for weapons and ammunition. So let's take a look at that one. As you can see, I've set this with no aircraft and no liquids and the equipment doesn't include tea pods fuel tanks etc which are in the other warehouse i wanted this just for weapons and ammunition so just items that go bang as you can see i've set this to store quite a lot more than the farp itself so this can replenish the farp within a few minutes but as you can see, this also has two suppliers of its own, and those are located in the ports of Beirut and Junai. One supplies are sent from either of these two ports, which are both around 18 miles away. It'll take around 50 minutes to arrive as the speed is set to 22 knots, and a supply vehicle will then arrive every two hours. This is just my example of course, and you certainly don't need to have a warehouse on site, you can just use the FARP, but you can daisy chain as many facilities as you see fit, and you can even have two-way supplies if you wish. One final item which isn't specific to FARPs but is worth mentioning is the resupply of ground units. My base has four rapier SAMs, each of which has four missiles, and it's a common tactic to fly just in range of a SAM, letting it fire and then turning away until it runs out of missiles. Now, to me, that's cheating. SAMs won't be rearmed by the FARP itself. 
The only way to rearm a SAM is to have a suitable grown unit nearby, like the ones listed. Now, these all have unlimited ammunition and you can't really do anything about that. But it does take several minutes to replace each missile. And maybe you could fudge something else by activating and deactivating these units to limit them further. So play around and see what suits your missions the best. But for now, let's take a look at the mods we've used in this farp. The most obvious mod I'm using is Ground Ramp, and that's all that's in it. I'm not sure that any Harrier bases or FAPs ever actually use one of these, other than obviously aircraft carriers, but it's a nice little addition, and it allows takeoff at full load with a short takeoff. However, if you hit the ramp too fast, then you can damage undercarriage, so your runway should be no more than 700 to 800 feet. Next we have the AM2 mod, which is where this ground matting comes from. The matting gives a hard surface for taxiing and a smooth surface for takeoffs. It can be a bit awkward to get right and you need the runway itself all aligned in this direction, otherwise there could be bumps due to the underlying terrain. The different sizes of matting and each can be a static object or an actual farp. And the mod comes with additional stuff like tents, ammo trolleys and such like. The control tower is from the 476 range targets and that's all I've used from this pack. But it's quite a smart mod so worth a mention and contains loads of range targets including this gun pit and bomb target. But remember to set them as an opponent, otherwise it counts as fratricide. Then we have the SAM assets pack, and this gives us all sorts of ground units ideal for making bases. There's barriers, bunkers, all of the fencing around the FARP, and various revetments, including this one, which I have perched an early warning radar on, giving it an unobstructed view. Finally, we have the Masson 92 asset pack. This gives a whole raft of really good ground units from the gates at the front of a base, ammo crates, the hangars above the harriers, containers, ladders, HESCO barriers, and also a few drivable units, including the ammo carrier you saw earlier. But one of the coolest things are these lights, which are superb for night ops. I'm gonna wrap things up there, as I wanna get out on the range to practice some gun runs in the pit before it's too dark. So thank you for watching. Feel free to leave comments and ask questions and please do hit like and subscribe.